So in this video, we're going to have a look at the coronary arteries. Now, remember that the heart is just a big pump, and this pump is comprised of muscle, which we call myocardium, heart muscle, and that when this muscle contracts, it's able to squeeze the blood that's inside either the atria or ventricles of the heart and squeeze them to their relative location. So from the atria down to the ventricles, or when those ventricles contract, squeeze the blood out to the lungs or to the body. Now, because it's muscle, when muscle contracts, this is work. And when muscle works, it requires oxygen and requires nutrients, which means it needs to be fed, just like every other muscle in the body. So what that means is heart muscle itself also requires a blood supply. Now, many people don't think about how the blood obtains, uh, the heart obtains its blood supply. And a lot of people think that it just takes the blood that's within the heart and draws upon it, but it doesn't. The heart itself needs a dedicated blood supply. And these are the coronary arteries. Now, there's two major types of coronary arteries. There's the left and right coronary artery. And they continue to branch and branch and branch. And I only want to talk about four branches of coronary arteries. And they're the only four I want you to remember for this semester. Okay? So let's first have a look. Let's draw a heart. Very simple, very basic heart, obviously. And what I want you to draw coming out the top is going to be the aorta. Now, as you know, the aorta has semilunar valves present, and these semilunar valves allow for the blood to go one way, up, and not come back down. If you were to do a heart dissection, have a look down the aorta, you would see the semilunar valves, okay? But you'd also see two little holes. Now, these holes open up and form the coronary arteries, okay? Now, if you have a look closely, You'll find that what happens is when that left ventricle contracts, pushes blood up through into the aorta, that is not when the coronary arteries fill. In actual fact, when the heart relaxes in diastole and the blood wants to come back down, that is when the blood moves into the coronary arteries. And you can see that because this is the left hand side of the heart, this is the right, but you have the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. And you can see they're culling off the aorta. Now, if we just focus on the left, I want to show you the two that I want you to remember. As this coronary artery comes out from the aorta, from the trunk of the aorta, it starts to branch off. And starts to move its way, wrap its way around the left-hand side of the heart and move towards the back, the posterior aspect of the heart. So it moves its way around the back and then wraps around. This artery here is called the circumflex. Now the circumflex artery, you can see, it moves around. Now there is a little sulcus, so a little groove that's present here and here. And this groove separates the atria from the ventricles. And this is where the circumflex moves through. The circumflex runs along this atrioventricular sulcus. Okay, now you'll see that the left coronary artery continues down like this, down the anterior aspect of the heart, down towards the apex. Now you'll see that there's going to be some branches that come off it, but predominantly what we're interested in is this large artery, this large coronary artery that descends down the front of the heart. And because of where it's located, it's called the left anterior, because it's at the front of the heart, descending, because it's going downwards, artery. Sometimes it's referred to as the lad. Now, this lad moves down another little groove of the heart, and this groove separates the left and right ventricle. So it's called the interventricular sulcus. That's what this group's called, that the lad descends down. Now, that's why the lad can also be called the interventricular artery. The left interventricular artery. So let's write that. 
left into ventricular tongue. Okay, same thing. And you can see that this lab moves down and it feeds predominantly, it feeds around about 55% of the anterior lateral aspect of the left hand side of the heart. 55% of the anterior lateral aspect. You can see that the circumflex moves around and can also feed the lateral posterior aspect of the left hand side of the heart. Now, if we look at the right coronary artery, you'll see that the right coronary artery starts to move its way down. Also, remember I said there's a sulcus here that separates the, anti uh, the atria from the ventricles. There's also a sulcus here. This right coronary artery continues its way down and then starts to branch like this. Now this branch that's coming down is called the marginal artery. And this marginal artery can sometimes continue down like that and you'll also have some small branches coming up like this. That's the marginal artery. But you can see that the right coronary continues and folds its way down the back of the heart and starts to descend down the back like this. Now, this artery that's descending down the back is the fourth one I want you to be aware of. And this one is called the posterior descending artery. Okay? So what are the four I want you to be aware of? Well, first, the coronary arteries arise at the base of the aorta. It's above or superior to the semilunar valves, so that when the blood contracts, when the ventricles contract and push the blood up, under diastole, when it relaxes and the blood wants to come back down, it sits on those semilunar valves and drains into the coronary arteries. The blood can move through the left coronary artery and branch into the circumflex. It can continue down the left anterior descending coronary artery, feeding 55% of the left hand side of the heart. Or it can move through the right coronary artery, branch into the marginal, feeding the anterior aspect of the right ventricle, or move behind and start to branch downwards to the posterior descending artery, feeding the posterior aspect of the left ventricle. Now sometimes this posterior descending can connect up with the anterior descending. And this connection is called an anastomosis. It's called an anastomosis. That's when two separate vessels come together. So hopefully this all makes sense and you're able to sit back and draw the coronary arteries and label the four important coronary arteries I want you to know.